All right, I know I get people all the time watching who want to start their own business, the entrepreneurs, if you will. And I know that there's a lot of you guys out there that watch me that want to do your own thing. In order to run a business, you have to have an online presence. You need to be able to add the right things to a website that's going to represent your business. That is why I'm excited to tell you guys about Hostinger. Hostinger is a website builder, and it lets you control your own destiny. You build your own site, you can build your own store, and you do it by getting help with some AI. And it helps out tremendously, and you don't have to have any expertise really whatsoever. I know, it's intimidating. You say, I don't know how to build a site. I don't, I'm don't. i going to need to pay extra money to be able to do this and do that, and somebody be an expert to help me out, and you don't. This is what Hostinger does. It is absolutely a very, very, very reasonable price. And you do it. You choose how you want it to look. It looks legit. It looks professional. And I'm excited to tell you guys more about it. Because if you're representing what you want to do best in your business, you want it to look good. And that's what Hostinger does. It's simple. And you can use the AI and it's helpful because it lets you build in copy to explain what the site is all about. If you've been holding off on trying to build a website because you think, no, 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 I can't do it. Too expensive. Not going to be able to figure it out. Well, now I want you to check out Hostinger.com slash big thing and get 10% off of your plan today. You will find it simple. You will find it affordable. You will find it easy, and you'll find it beneficial. So go to hostinger.com slash big thing and get 10% off of your plan today. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to UAP Tuesday. Man, oh, man, it just keeps coming. They said there was going to be more information coming out in the beginning of 2024, and they were like, oh, how much more? A lot, a lot. We have just a few different topics to talk about today, but we'll probably talk about them for like an hour and a half. I told both Riley and Peter today to buckle up because we're going to be talking for quite quite a while today. Um, well, if you're here, first of all, the stuff we're going to talk about, whether it's the UAP, the, uh, J- the jellyfish video that's been going around, um, obviously the news of all the senators going into – the skiff and getting information. Some people feel like there was actual progress made. Most felt like there was kind of progress made. And our buddy Burchett was still very, very skeptical. So we'll talk about what it actually means. I think they all agreed, though, that there's going to be another hearing and how important that is and how Burchett won't give up the names of the witnesses this time because he said last time he did that, they were contacted and told not to show up by NASA, and he's he said, I ain't making that mistake this time. So who who the hell could those people be that are going to come in, and, and how significant will it be, and when will it happen? So we'll get into that for sure. We'll talk about, again, the that that jellyfish uh, UAP has been making its rounds and all over the place, and a lot of different people have been covering it, and it was featured in the TMZ doc produced by both um, Jeremy Corbell and George Knapp, I believe, and we'll break that down because a lot of people are talking about it. A lot of people are confused about it. Um, some people think it's real. Some people think that it's still there's it's it, it, most everybody thinks it's real. But the question is, what is it? it? And people have difference of opinion, especially on this panel. So we'll get into that. And there's there's more stuff too. Like there's um, there's an actual marine who talked about that UAP and the, that oh potential UAP the jellyfish. And what it could be. And then Ross Colhart got sent something that not two days later that there was another jellyfish type sighting. And Tech Peter had sent me something that the jellyfish ones have been being seen since like the 50s. And there's a report in like 1954 or something. So there's so much to talk about. So much. And we haven't even started yet. So... We want you guys to hit that button. Hit that subscribe button. It's very important. We're trying to get to 200,000 subscribers faster than we got to 100, and it is important for you guys to subscribe because we want you to be part of the conversation. If you're brand new to this, and I'm realizing that there's brand new people that are finding this channel all the time, and you're like, well, these guys aren't experts. No shit. No shit. That's exactly right. We are not experts. We are just the common people asking questions, what is flying around in those skies? And why isn't the government telling the people about it? We we are not the Jeremy Corbells and the George Knapps and that no. Oh, these guys don't know the deep dive. No, we're learning. So learn with us. That's the whole point. We want to represent the just the average everyday schmo, if you will, and you guys be part of that. So 
what I did notice, we had a, we had a great episode last week. Over two hundred thirty thousand people watched, but not all of you subscribed. If you did that, we would get the conversation going because the major news networks, guys, they ain't covering it. Like you got the news nations and you got other people that are covering it on the internet, and that's wonderful. But the major news nations uh, news cycles are not covering it, and we have to be those people until that time comes, because it's important. Get the name out if if we. Or the, the word out. If we are the ones that you're getting the news from, I love that. If it's somebody else on the internet, great. If it's News Nation, great. But subscribe to the channel. Let's do it together. Hit that button. Let's get to 200,000 fast. So we're going to keep building, man. We're going to keep building. All right. So Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere podcasts are found, it is the big thing. Me, Mark Riley, and special guest Attack Peter. Let's do it. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. It's UAP Tuesday on The Big Thing. Trying to figure out what is going on in the world, in the sky, in the ocean. What is happening? I'm Christian Harlow, joined, as always, by my buddy, partner in crime, Mark Yodius Riley. What a show. It's, what a day. There's a lot going on. There is so much going on. I'm uh, happy to be here, as always, uh... It's good to have you. And we've had some great special guests. One of our reoccurring special guests, he is someone I, he's, he's a friend of mine, and I talk to him about this stuff all the time. And now you do too, through yeah. the, the, to our, our wonderful texting thread that we have. <laughs> yeah. And that is the one and only Attack Peter. What's up, Peter? How are you? Hey, how's it going, man? I'm so happy to be here. It's uh, my favorite way to kind of like have my UAP therapy dump. Like all this stuff floats around in my head all day. I need to talk to someone about it. Yeah. It's, it's so true that you that you say that. I have a lot of different things. Um, there, it's like this pocket of people. It is growing, but mm -hmm. you're st we're still in a pocket, right? And our little crew, our little big thing crew, is is, is growing, right? We've got. I think it's me, you, Riley, uh, Roxy, Pavel. Mm -hmm. um, I got. I have my. I, I have my buddy. Um, I can't. I don't know. I, I I asked him if he could if, if he could be on the show, and he said he could. He just got to get clearance first. So I don't want to say his name yet, but I have another person. Clearance. Yeah, for where his work. For his oh, work. No, okay. no. So we're, he, I just wanted to make sure that we can that we can do that. Um, my, I, yeah. So um, what. What I was gonna say is we are, it's the crew the crew's kind of building you know yeah and um but it's funny because I was talking to a friend of mine from Queens and I mean he lives in he lives in a different part of New York now but I was talking to him and he was like oh yeah I noticed you're really diving into that the UFO stuff and I was looking at his, and he's like I, I I was wondering this guy he can't really be into this stuff right <laughs> and and I was and I said yes. and I said let me ask you a question before you say that. What, what, how much of it do you know about? Yeah, that's all. And, and right. every, that's my question to everyone. Yeah. And they all don't know jack shit. No. They yeah. don't know anything. They don't know. And, and what I mean is, that I shouldn't say they're not aware, is what I mean. Right. They're not aware. They don't know about, they, they kind of, I kind of heard about those hearings. I kind of heard about those hearings, was one of the things that I got. That's the one that always gets me yeah. and pisses me off the yeah. most. The, the one, no, the one that gets me the most is that nobody knows about the fact that the Senate majority leader was in front of Congress saying, we need more, yeah. we need more disclosure, and it wasn't covered by no one. And I, and when I tell people, they're like, really? That's, like, that's yes. the one that got my dad. Yeah. Like really? that's absolutely, the that's, yeah. That's what you mentioned right at the top of the show is that no one's covering this stuff, and and I think that's the effect of it. You yes. know, like it, you can, it, it can be all over the internet all day, but the reality is, as much as we think everybody watches YouTubers on the internet, they don't. No. And so it's never going to cross through to that main mainstream generation until. I don't know what else could it would require. You'd have to land on the lawn of the White House. It, That's it, what we keep saying and, and hope happens is that uh, we get that shared experience of the big one, yeah. you know, the yeah, Independence they, Day. They, they, the, they can't hide. That they can't hide, absolutely. And I they think have to cover. Right. Yeah. That's one need, of them. You need, that's like, one credible way. influencers to see something and say something. That's the thing. Like, you need people who, like, are you net? Like, if Tom Hanks came out and said right. something, you know what I mean? But even them, though, dude, because, yeah. like, you look at I mean, Kurt Russell talks about it. But speaking of which, so yes. so I told I told Riley this um, yesterday, and I haven't yeah. told Peter yet. So well, the, this will be – this is Tuesday, obviously. So on Sunday, I went to the Critics' Choice Awards, and when I went there – I, I was looking for 
one person in particular that I was going to talk to. And I said, and I, so I walked up to this gentleman and I said, I know that a lot of people are going to ask you about your movie today and your performance was wonderful. It was great. It was great. But what do you think about that UFO jellyfish? And the man I'm talking about is, of course, Paul Giamatti. My boy. Shut the fuck That's up, my guy. dude. And, and That's my guy right there. And I sat down with Paul Giamatti for about three to five minutes, and I talked to him about the UFO, the UAP jellyfish. And he was like, you know, at first I thought it was the, uh, I thought it was something on the lens. But it's not that. No. It's not that. Yeah. And, and then he was like uh, a lot of credible sources. And he asked me about the Miami Mall thing. We talked about that for a little bit. And then we talked about the senators going into the, the skiff. Um, he has his own podcast. What? And is that right? Yeah, he's got his own podcast on UAP. Like, it's it's everything. It's, it's like he like talks about just a bunch of like different like you know uh, spiritual. St I think like, like you know um, uh, I don't know if it's conspiracies. I don't want I don't want to misquote what it's about. But he talks about like these types of things, and he's really because I said to him, I said I know that you're really into the UFO stuff. He's like I'm really into it. I said no, I know, I know, I know. And um and we talked for a bit. It was my favorite. And I said I left going. I guarantee you, I am the only person that asked him about. I'm that. sure this uh, th this guy. This Giamatti, not yeah. only in my one of my favorite movies of all time, obviously was Sideways. Private Parts, obviously. Well, Private Parts, Private too. parts yeah, is up yeah, yeah. there. It's up there, did Peter. You, did you see when he gave a shout out to Stern? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I talk, I, and, I, and I brought that up to him, Peter. I said, to, "Oh, nice." I said, "Thanks for mentioning uh, Stern. That was a great uh, thing." And he goes, "He's like, uh, he goes, oh, it was true. It was true. That's why I said, yeah. go ahead, he, right. he, he's a he's a huge horror nerd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, he okay. he was asked. He was on uh, the red carpet at the Globes, and they're like, "What you know what." What do you want to do? What you know? What's a genre you want to do? He's like horror. Yeah. He immediately had it ready, and they're like, "What kind? What movie?" He's like, "Texas Chainsaw Massacre," <laughs> and I'm like, "That's my boy right there. Yeah, right. That That's is awesome. absolutely." And he's like, "I can't be in Texas yeah. Chainsaw Massacre," but he's like, "I would do a horror movie." No, dude, he was. That's what. That's what we need. That's the podcast crossover, for Christian. Real. You got to go on his show and talk uh, about this, yeah, or get him on here. Like, and I, I'll, yeah. I'll tell you, I was so excited. To talk to him about it because I could tell he was excited because he was very excited to talk to other people about his movie, obviously, and everything too. But yeah. hold he up, did, it's best of the year, man. That's my favorite. It's really good. He yeah. didn't, but he did not expect me to bring that up. Mm -hmm. So when I did, and I told him I host, I, I hosted a show every Tuesday. He's like, "Oh, really?" So I was telling him about that, and and it. But Peter, to your point, it's that you got to get more and more people on board where yeah. they're. You know they're talking about it and listening because people still think. And even if, and I told my friend last night that same story. And I tell you guys, and you guys understand because you're you're kind of deep into it. And my friend's like, oh yeah, and who? No, no, no. It was a, it was another guy who was like, well, you should cover Sasquatch next, right? Kid, and, uh, <laughs> and I was and I said, see, that's what I would have said to someone about uh, seven months ago. Yeah, if I didn't know everything kind of going on. Yeah. And I and people still that it, it's even though they go, oh yeah, yeah and they kind of listen to me when I'm telling them, but probably they're probably going, this guy's a nutbag, right? Oh yeah. And then it's probably what they're, but because they're not paying attention to the stories. Like for me, it's it's a matter of the when I watch those that six minutes of that back to back of all the senators coming out yeah. and nobody of all those people I just talked about that of these people who don't know what's going on. None of them know about the senators that were in this meeting with this gift. This was no. a bunch of senators for so those people who don't know. There was a, 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 everybody who's been in a very a bipartisan group that was in this meeting in a skiff, which is a which is the classified meeting where they were trying to find out exactly um, if the, if they were going to find out any new information whatsoever. Now, last week on the show, we were very skeptical that anything was going to come out of this. Mm -hmm. Now, if you listen, did you get a chance to listen to any of these? No, interviews? I didn't. Okay, no. so I'm going to play. So I can't wait. Great, I'm going to play these interviews for you because, and and then we'll talk about it on the other side because this is about six minutes. So I'm going to show everybody this. This is a, and I think it's a clip together from maybe the UFO Secrecy Channel or or it could be from News Nation. I can't remember, but I'm going to play it and we'll find out soon. Yeah. Um, either way, I want people to watch all six minutes or listen to all six minutes because it's. I feel very different um, points of view from everybody who came out with one, I think with one through line. So let's play this and then we'll, uh, we'll talk about it afterwards. So this is what I'll say. I'm gonna reiterate, we can't talk about specifics and what we got into, but what I can tell you is what Gresh shared with me in an unclassified setting that I firmly believe in. Um, I believe that he's telling the truth. I think that he is a credible witness. And what I can also say is one thing in particular that really caused me to be concerned about this whole thing is that Gresh had stated to myself, Representative Burchett and another member on the phone, that there were people that were hurt hiding this information. And 
keeping this information safe and or trying to come forward with this information. What I can tell you is I believe that claim after now leaving. It has become apparent that there is a movement, whether it's within the intelligence, intelligence community or not, to prevent us from finding out more information on this. And so we are going to do what we need to do as investigators to continue to pull on whatever strings and see where they lead. I think it's incredibly important to listen to the specific words that Gresh uses. You know, Gresh never said extraterrestrial or alien. He said interdimensional. I think that that's incredibly important because those are the types of things that when we go in there, we, you know, uh, there's just certain things that I think that it's important that you guys listen to on that. I think that Grush, when I at, when I had talked to him on whether these were specifically extraterrestrials or alien in origin, he said interdimensional. He refused to um, address, use certain terms, and I think that's incredibly important because I think that that's really the question we're all wanting to know, right? And so I'm actually going to have a sit down conversation with him and ask him to come back and talk to us directly because it seems that we are getting more information from the source, then going into a skiff and then not being able to tell you guys what we're talking about. Is this about. stuff? So did you hear anything in there that moves the needle forward, that changes what you thought before? Are they stonewalling you? Walk us through <laughs> what, what do you know now that you didn't know when you walked in? I just think what uh, the, most of the American people uh, fear is true is that the government, there's a concerted effort to conceal as much information as possible, uh, both from Congress and to the general public. So uh, I asked very specific questions uh, and was unable to get specific answers. And so that's a problem, and we're not going to stop until we get the truth. Did you hear anything? There's, it's giving me a more clear perspective, um, a little bit more of a clear perspective before. It's very blurry. Everything is extremely blurry. But I'm getting a little bit more clarity. Are you satisfied with the answers you got today? Or? I'm not full. I mean, not fully. I, there's, it, it, but it does give us a direction to go next. And that's the key thing. So, so where do you guys go from here? I, I can't say. No, heck no. This is just more of the same, <clears throat> more frustration. Um, you know, you put these guys and gals in a tough position. They're, they're only, it's very compartmentalized, as we said. I said, it's like looking down the barrel of a 22 rifle, and all they know is just right in that little circle. And, um, <clears throat> but no, it didn't, it didn't disqualify anything I've thought in the past. Uh, we got some pretty definitive stuff that would <clears throat> that I'm sure y'all get from somewhere else about what was discussed and and um, to me it was uh, it it moved it it uh, made what I think more credible. No, I'm I'm I think they're covering this thing up. That doesn't. You know, and these guys pretty much verified that they. Um, so, what does the investigation look like going forward? Is it more hearings? More I think free? so, but it, it's 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 got me focused on who we need to be bringing into the hearing. As I've stated, it's not about little green men and flying saucers. The issue is tens of millions of dollars on an issue that we've been told does not exist since 1947. Yet they're spending that money on researching something. So, who would you like? prefer to bring in front well last time I did that I, uh, we our, our selection dwindled so I'm gonna keep that pretty close to the cuff because they ended up getting told not to come do you feel as though they were more transparent this time did you get anything that you didn't know before I'm more concerned than I was going into the skiff and I think that they have a lot of questions they that remain unanswered and what I mean, I mean now one of the things that Mr. Grush talked about in the open hearing, he said that there had been non-human biologics. Is that some of the type of things that you guys have gotten into and that they have not been as forthcoming on? Alien spacecraft or something that's not human? Look, everybody is wondering about the substance of those claims. Mr. Grush um, has made some claims and uh, he's also he needs to be treated with some respect, and we need to get into the substance of his claims. Was, was that after? Okay. We got to talk about this one. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, does any of this go toward your conversation about trying to get this bipartisan bill? I mean, is there something that touched on this? I, I mean, look, I, I think that the bipartisan bill came out of a discussion at a first hearing uh, to ensure that pilots have an ability to uh, report UAPs. There right now is no system for pilots or aviation personnel to report UAPs, whatever UAPs may be, and so the bill would actually do that. Um, obviously, we can't talk about the details of the, of the briefing, but um, I actually I think there was some interesting information, and so I think that um, 
this is a topic that I think is a national security issue, and it's really important that there's disclosure and transparency. I think that's what the public wants. I think it's also a very serious topic, and so we've got to just take it with, with, with seriousness. It is, it is not a joke. And without I just think that it's more important to focus on that there's, this is a serious topic, and it deserves um, serious attention, and I actually encourage also members of the media to continue covering this topic. I think that's really important. Um, it, it is not a fringe topic. It is a serious national security topic. Okay. Did you hear anything that you didn't know? Are you being frustrated by this like some of your colleagues are? Well, obviously, look, the process is extremely frustrating, but actually this is the first real briefing that we've had that we've now made, I would say, progress on some of the claims Mr. Grush has made in his complaint and some of the claims he provided uh, to, to Congress. This is the first time we kind of got a ruling on what the IG thinks of those claims. Uh, and so, you know, so this meeting, unlike the one we had previously when we did this briefing, this one actually moved the needle. Very good. So that'll lead to more public hearings? Oh, I, I think this one's going to lead to a lot of things. I mean, there's, there, there were, there's a lot of new questions and a lot of new areas to ask and poke in based on what we got in this, this meeting. All right. So there's like everybody seemed to think inside of that, e even Burchett, who was a bit, you know, like, uh, like that, that something's going to come of it. Burchett's biggest thing was they didn't discredit anything. They didn't make me think, oh, maybe we're chasing the wrong thing here. The exact opposite as we're like Mouskowitz is like, oh, this was, this was, we're, yeah, there's going to be more hearings. This is going to lead to a lot of different things. There's the one guy that's been skeptical the whole time, and he's just he's like running up the stairs, and he's just mm -hmm. like he's like ah, I just uh, uh. Um, Luna seemed to be to get the information. I Peter, what did you think about this? And maybe I'm reading into this, but I every interview that I've heard with Grush, he has kind of suggested the interdimensional stuff, but never really confirmed it. Right? He yeah. suggested it. Luna seems to say in this that when you talk to David Grush, he doesn't say. You know, uh, from this world, he says interdimensional. Yep. Like definitively, it seems like she was saying. So, I don't know if that's a slip. I don't know if that's something more that they can talk about. But it seemed like a slip, didn't it? I thought that was a total slip because later in the uh, interviews, one of the reporters tries to get another one of the uh, representatives to comment on it. You know, and they won't comment on that. So yeah, that's what I think happened. I think he's been hinting at it for a while. So have a lot of these guys, uh, and probably behind closed doors, he may have said something to the effect of it is, you know, this or that or the other. And she, you know, mentioned it. I thought that was wild. It also makes me think that she's probably not as clued in to all all the uh, obfuscation going on mm. in the media. You know, maybe she's unaware that's a controversial thing. You know? Maybe, maybe so, but yeah, it's, yeah. What do you think, Ryan? Well, I, I, I think that, the, the, one, maybe that she misspoke. Um, maybe she misquoted. I don't know. Uh, I, I don't have a definitive voice in uh, of seems, grush but he seems to hint that a lot the he does stuff. hint it yeah. absolutely yeah. because there's a st there we always talk about the stigma behind all of this mm -hmm. and the stigma of an alien or an extraterrestrial like war of the worlds or et or close encounters it it conjures a certain thing in our society that they go you know and i always equate it to you know wizards and dragons yeah. you know it's a part of our pop culture to say Aliens from another world come down. War of the Worlds are Martians. They come here. They 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 are hell bent on destroying us. Interdimensional is something that is almost science based. You know that we can start to discuss it in ways that there can be facts behind it, and and that I like more. And so, if behind closed doors, Grush is saying interdimensional, and she's now using that as as a way to 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 break that stigma down, I'm all for it. But I'm not saying one way or the other. I don't. I don't listen to her say interdimensional i go yep that's right no 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 i know i just i just don't when when the way that she said it i'm just talking more so when she was saying definitively where she's like when you talk to david grush he said he doesn't say extraterrestrial he says interdimensional he's right. never said straight out interdimensional he's hinted on that right but he's never said it so it just seems that but that's that's, that's i feel her right. doing the stigma thing like trying to yeah. get people to go listen we're not talking about little green men here yeah I we're wonder. talking about bigger ideas but you and I felt this. What did you think about listening to all the people? I mean, that wasn't everybody, but that was a lot of people. What, what was your takeaway from everybody that was in there 
too. Like, did you think because you, we were kind of skeptical that nothing was going to come out? Did you? Did it feel a little bit more hopeful? It, it felt hopeful, and I was, I was, I was actually hinting that I felt this could be a good thing, mm-hmm. and that this might have been a, a, a needle moving, a moving moment. Yeah. I, I, I see it as such. Yeah, I see this as a very promising thing. I see that. There are people coming out with kind of, you know, Pavel said it last week uh, of this, you know, this idea of looking at the people's faces that they come out, you know, right. and there are some right. people that are like, ah, yeah, 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 but there are people that are like, we've moved the needle. That was said. Um, there's going to lead, it's going to lead to more things. Sure. That was said. That is so promising. This, this stuff is so promising because again, every week we started the show saying we might just do this once a month and this, this and that. It's like we can't keep up with this stuff right it, now. It's true. Um, because Peter, who, who out of the ones that you had seen, um, out of those, and I mean, great job by UFO Secrecy on both YouTube and Instagram of putting all those together. Um, what, did anything particularly, did anything stand out to you? And what did you think about the hearing side of it? Because remember you and I spoke about, we didn't know if there was going to be a second hearing. We didn't know if a second hearing was going to be approved. It seems like not only is there going to be a second hearing, there could be various hearings, and there could be uh, a lot of these whistleblowers that were supposed to come forward that are actually going to. So what say you on all that? I got the impression, honestly, that something was said that was very tangible, and it doesn't necessarily mean, uh, you know, that it was a a specific craft or body or anything like that. I think something was said to the effect of, like, this is the money that's being spent on that, and and because they a lot of the guys came out a lot of the, the reps came out with this expression on their face like they don't have time for us they need to make a phone call right now to, to, to somebody you know there's like an urgency in their in their energy overall versus what i've heard them speak before was a little bit more uh well let's see i'm open-minded about it didn't you get that impression i got the impression that they all came out of there with their with like with like you know with the fire under their ass to get something yeah. done yeah. so I, I, did. I got the impression that something was pointed to that was concrete that that was like and someone says i forgot who it was that said something to the effect of like now we know what the actual question to ask to certain to so and so was yeah. yeah those kind of things make me think that a that a breadcrumb was dropped that you know motivated them all to go do something tangible like an actual call to action that they could act on at the moment Yeah, and I also think the other thing that we should definitely talk about, and I know that like Ross Colhart and other people have talked about this. um, The other thing is that it seemed like this is this. It's going to be very, very hard for skeptics to try to um, uh, discredit David Grush moving forward. He seems to be that what everybody seemed to say out of this, even the it seems like his a lot of his reports have been validated. Now, what which out of those reports, out of the because I don't know if there was a longer one or they mentioned, but like there was a longer. I've seen it. There's a, like there there is a, a a I think a more detailed one also that I saw where somebody was talking about like let's say hypothetically you know there's nine or ten um, options or questions out there that you want answered we had a lot of them, not all of them but some of them so we don't know out of the claims of David Grush which ones were validated inside right. of that skiff but it seemed like a bunch were and he's made some crazy claims and yeah. if if. And most of them are crazy. So I mean, and, and crazy, I mean, in a way like you know, you couldn't fathom it, but it all seems like those were validated. So, you know, it it seems as if there that it's going to be harder and harder for the people who are trying to say, well, this guy, you can't take him serious. I don't think they're going to be able to try to go after him anymore yeah. unless he does something really crazy. Yeah. Um, and they're like, oh yeah, look what he did. So you can't take this guy serious or, or they did. I, I just don't think you're going to be able to do that to him. Am I, am I wrong here, Riley? No, no, you're right. I believe that. I believe there's a groundswell of support around Grush. Yeah. And, um, and especially when it's coming from members of Congress that are going in this skiff and, and validating what he said, because he is one of the most credible People that has come forward along with Graves, you know, the, that was, you know, featured a lot in the in the documentary on TMZ, you know, so these witnesses that sat up in front of the Senate hearings are the most credible to date, in my opinion. Right. And so it's going to be tough to say, ah, they're crazy or nah, this or, or that. You know, we have people now coming out of the skiff. Phew, they move the needle. You right. know, that's that's huge. Yes. Yeah, that is big. Mousequit seems to be the one who is most. Um, excited. Mm-hmm. Burchett seems to be the one the most in like, ah, these guys. 
He, yeah. he's, <laughs> he's my grandfather sitting on the porch yeah. having been through this shit. He's over it because he's the one. He's, uh, he's leading the charge. Yeah, so he is. he is already maybe well aware of some of these things. And so maybe he's a little bit more uh, up to date on some of this, this information. I don't know. But he continues to be that guy that I just love watching his reactions yeah. to this yeah. because he is he's kind of he's over it yeah he's over it and he knows he said it before he's like i've kicked a hornet's nest with this right. stuff so i'm gonna hold things close to the chest and i like that yeah peter to me it seems like burchette's like look yeah i get it you guys are gonna tell it we know you, you're not gonna he know basically he's like i know all this if, if it makes yeah. everybody else around here happy and to hear that oh yeah okay this guy's not uh, Grush isn't a loony. I know that already. I know that this is happening. I know that, and I love his answers. His answer is the one that everyone should be talking about. And his answer is, what are they spending this money on? Like, exactly. it's been right. He's like, what are they spending the money on? He's like, it's not about the flying saucers. It's not about proving alien life. It's not about that. It's about what, where's this money going? They told us for years that there is no program. Well, clearly there is. Where is mm -hmm. it going? That's the question everyone should be asking because the other thing is that for those people I mentioned that aren't paying attention to this, like those people that aren't paying attention, of course, they're still doing the <clears throat> and holding their, their mouth and laughing. However, the ones that are paying attention to it no longer look at people like, especially if you're in government, if someone's, if you hear, it's not like, like 10, 15 years ago, if there was a senator chasing UFOs, you'd be like, that guy's out of his mind. I know, get him out of here. Now they're like, oh, well, there's actually, they're actually onto something over there. So, and it seems to be pretty real because they're doing all, so it, it's the people who are paying attention to it don't think it's, it's cuckoo town anymore. Right. So, but, but what, all of that stuff here, there was a lot to throw at you, but what, what no, yeah. What I mean, my, my first, uh, re response to, to Burchett is that I felt like he knew that he needed to slowly drag these people, you know, and catch them up to speed, Yeah. you know, so that they could all be on the same page. And the impression that I got was that he felt coming out of this, uh, meeting that he now has everybody caught up. Right. Right. And that's that's what it felt like. But but I also thought it was interesting to your point that he suddenly started talking about the money because that seems uh, like a a smart strategic move, you know, where it's like let everybody else keep talking about what it is and what it could be and all that. And now he gets to take on this like uh, um, wise patriarchal role of right. like. I'm just going, hey, guys, whatever it is, I'm just here to discuss the important stuff like where is the money that our citizens are paying into the government going and getting – where is it getting spent? Like that's inarguable. Like you can bring that up and no one's going to look at you cross-eyed. So I thought that was a really smart – uh, positioning for himself. Like he can now be the guy who's worried about the responsible things, you know? Yeah. And so that's what I actually want to get to the next clip because it's it's him being interviewed right outside the steps. So you just came from the briefing. Were, were you satisfied at, at what you heard? I, I know you know, you know, my biggest thing all along, it's, you know, obviously a lot of folks want to, it's little green man, it's flying saucers. Right. My concern is the tens of millions, if not billions of dollars that we've invested in the research of this issue since 1947 that we know of, and yet the federal government keeps telling Congress they don't exist, and yet uh, obviously they're, they're, they're investigating something. So you and, think- And then when you have, when I have an admiral tell me they're real, when I have uh, the top, some of the top pilots in the world say they're real. I, I, I don't see why American taxpayers can't get that information. So you think we've, there have been billions in potentially in government money that's been spent on developing something or? Well, that's, that, I'd like to know that. Are they developing something or they, have they recovered something that has allowed them to spend this much money? When you come out of of that briefing, um, what what questions do you, do you have? I end up with more questions every time, or just yeah, to, yeah, always because I always say it's like looking down the barrel of a of a twenty two rifle. They are very specific in what they know, and it is very compartmentalized. It's like Oak Ridge National Laboratory, which I don't represent, but over six thousand folks that work there live in in the second congressional district that I represent, and they. Um, you know, during the Second World War, over 2,000 people were working on the bomb. 
and less than a half a dozen knew what, what they were working on because it was so compartmentalized. I mean, husbands and wives did not know. Brothers and sisters who worked at the lab did not know because of that compartmentalization. And that's carried over into this. So say it was a recovered craft in 1947 at Roswell, New Mexico. Every person that was involved in that is, is, is dead now. And it's been passed on and passed on and passed on. And now uh, with these private contractors who you and the press and we as Congress cannot access because of, they don't, they're not under FOIA, Freedom of Information right. Act, because they have passed it on to a private contractor. And is that by design? I don't know. But I still think we need to ask some questions and we need to know some answers. That guy, it, it's just going on too long. And I, there's no excuse for not giving us other than arrogance. I, I hear you on on asking questions, and that's part of your job, obviously. But um, I, I'm wondering beyond that, what comes next in in your view? Well, that's a great question, and I'm going to be working with the chairman. And since I'm not chairman of the the so-called subcommittee that or it is a subcommittee, I'm going to be working with them to get us an excellent list of witnesses for this next hearing and I'm not going to release them because the last time I did that the folks were literally told not to come. By who? By, uh, we were told by NASA, a quasi branch of NASA, other groups, they, they claim they didn't do it but the folks told me they did and we'd asked over a dozen folks, that's 12, and um, we ended up with three excellent witnesses that, that put um, their love of this country over the love of themselves because obviously Grush was ridiculed uh, he was outed as somebody that had PS PTSD and you know in East Tennessee we don't make fun of people because they served their country and, and suffered from it uh, we celebrate those people and we try to get them and support them but in Washington DC they destroy those people and that just shows the ruthless nature and that shows that we are over the target that we have as I was told I have kicked a hornet's nest at the Pentagon Hmm. I know you got a flight to catch, so we'll leave it there. Right, Thank buddy. you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Yep. It seems to me that uh, Burchett's just over it. He's just over yep. it. He's over the policy. I mean, he pisses on DC every chance he gets. Like he can't. Like he, and yeah. he can't. He can't stand it. He craps on the corruptness of the government. He craps on the fact that the, all this money's been handled. He can't. He's 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 over it. My thing that I got out of it that I'm excited about, to be completely honest, is the fact that he's like, uh, he's like, yeah, we're going to just put together a list of credible witnesses, like yeah. a ton of them. And I think that for him, that's what he wanted to do in the first place. So he's just completely, yeah, I, okay, fine. You told me everything I know already. Can we go? Great, we can go. I should, in, in, in the little bitterness in his voice where he's like, I should be the chairman of this thing. Mm -hmm. But he got screwed because uh, I think at the time uh, – What's his face? Um, McCarthy took him out of the out of that spot, or someone took him out of that spot, right. and so he was he he has been part of that. So, Peter, I think he's he's over it. Yeah, you know it's funny. Like he probably has a lot of you know grief uh, about how the government works in general. That's yeah. like manifesting itself the same way it always does through this particular lens. And uh, I think that's probably one of the reasons everybody's pushing back so hard is it because if any of this comes out to be true, you know, miss, you know, directing funds or black projects or hiding technology or hiding, you know, the, S, the, the nature of reality, it's going to, as a side note, you know, prove how corrupt the and, and, and dysfunctional the, the, the system of government actually has been for years, you know? Yeah. And so I think he's just, you know, fighting two battles at the same time, it seems like. Yeah, it does. And also, and, and then you look at what the rumor from what uh, Grush said, I think on Rogan and other people is that Mike Turner's trying, he's, he's in the same party. He's trying, and he's trying yeah. to get involved in that race yeah. with, and he's trying to get yeah. Burchett's seat overtaken. Uh, uh, why? Why? Why is somebody in the same party trying to get a, a guy who shut down the bill in the first place? For people who don't know, Mike Turner is basically the guy who, who not shut it down, but um, water down the the Schumer and Rounds bill of what it what it could have been, and uh, Turner was like the main guy. So yeah, to getting yeah. the getting the other mic and then getting uh, what um, uh, Mitch uh, McConnell yeah. to 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 you know put the kibosh on some of these things that we wanted as a uh, transparency. Yeah. That's and that's that seems to be Burchett, What he is constantly fighting for is just finding. 
well, what the hell are you spending this money on then right. if you are telling us there's nothing there? Right. You know, that's just old school kind of, you know, getting in there and, and, and finding out the facts. The, the other thing that I love about this guy is what he said about Grush and, and supporting him. Yeah. And that, you know, we celebrate these people that, that you know, have PTSD by serving our, our country. We don't ridicule and we don't attack them. And that's what seems to be happening in, in Washington. That, and yes, and... It really only happened with that one reporter who took a shot at it, and that reporter got, you know, manure thrown all over his face when he There's tried to do it. There's a lot of so, people, though, yeah. that are doing that um, just outside of that kind of world. Sure, sure, you know? sure, sure. And that's what, you know, for him to say that is just, I think it's just admirable. Yeah. Uh, that's what I want to say. Uh, couldn't agree more. Now, I'm very curious with you guys. What do you think that this is going to lead to? You think that we are going to get more hearings? Will we get the whistleblowers that we thought? What will it... Uh, a mass two of anything. I really want to get your comments in there. So make sure like what, and, and by the way, people who have popped into this, that maybe were skeptical. Are you less skeptical, more skeptical? What do you think is going to happen with this? Were you aware of all these things that were happening? Put it in the comments. I want to know. All right, we're going to move on. We're going to go to the UAP, the UAP, the jellyfish UAP that it's going to be a big date. I don't know if there's going to be a debate, but it's going to be a big conversation here. It's going to be, there's been breakdowns and all that. We're really going to get into it in just a moment here. But before I do, I wanted to tell you guys each and every week, we're able to continue to do the show, well, not only from your support, but because of our sponsors and without our sponsors and you guys getting the sponsors, we wouldn't be able to do this because it's how we, we keep us on the air. So let me tell you about two of our wonderful sponsors right now, both Magic Spoon and BetterHelp. Here you go. I'm so excited to have Magic Spoon back. So you guys have said it. You said it to me lately. You go, hey, you lost some weight, man. You're looking good. I've been trying. My New Year's resolution was to cut back on sugar, add protein to my diet, and I stay on track with my fitness goals. So I was excited to get Magic Spoon back on the rotation makes it easy and it's more delicious than ever now growing up i love cereal i and not even just growing up recently i've been trying i, I fire down sh uh, sugary cereal for a snack and I, it but the problem is when you get older you got to watch out for those empty carbs because they they add up magic spoon has the amazing flavors that you love but it's got high protein and it's got less sugar so for me i did the protein shakes for a bit but i wanted a, a delicious way to get my protein before and after workouts and it's good for a snack Variety pack, they have cocoa, they have fruity, they have frosted, they have peanut butter. I mix the uh, peanut butter and the cocoa, personally. This pack has zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and about four to five grams of net carbs. There's only 140 calories per serving. High protein and zero grams of sugar. It's amazing. So if you go to magicspoon.com slash big thing, you can grab a variety pack and you can try it today. So be sure to use our promo code big thing at checkout to save $5 on your order. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product. It's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. If you don't like it, any reason they're going to refund your money, no questions asked. Remember, start the new year off with a great delicious bowl of high protein cereal at Magic Spoon dot com slash big thing and use the code big thing to save five dollars off that's magic dot com slash big thing this episode of the big thing is brought to you by better help what are some things that you guys want to keep the same about yourself or your life in 2024 where are you already crushing it think opposite of new year new you because around new years we get obsessed with how to change ourselves instead of just expanding on what we're already doing right or maybe you already finally organized one part of your space and you want to tackle another one. Therapy helps you find your strengths so you can ditch the extreme resolutions and make changes that really stick. I have seen it. I've talked about it many times. You've been watching my show with people who have, uh, Roxy Stryer has talked about it many times, how BetterHelp has helped her, people inside of my family, that BetterHelp has helped them. Um, it's just therapy can benefit you. Talking, it helps tremendously. So I've seen it, I've seen the effects, I've seen it around me, I've seen people who just have really, really uh, benefited from talking. So if you are thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, it's designed to be convenient, it's flexible, and it's suited to your schedule. You fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime, no additional charge. Very easy to do. So celebrate the progress that you've already made. You gotta visit betterhelp.com slash big thing today and you get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash 
big thing. All right, thank you to our friends over at Magic Spoon. And once again, this episode was sponsored by BetterHelp. Please go and check it out if you want to talk to somebody, need to talk to somebody, better help. And hey, Riley, I've lost some weight, man. I don't know if you noticed, but uh, I've been doing it with the uh, doing yeah. it with, it, it's helped. There's a lot of protein in that uh, in that magic spoon. So check it out. Um, all right, let's move and let's talk about this thing. First, let's just show it. Let's just show this thing. Uh, the, the, this is the report of the, the, the jellyfish. Here it is. All right, here is the, uh, the actual video itself. Let's look at this thing. The raw footage of it. It's really loud. I'm going to turn it down. It's like stealth. So, 2018 in Iraq. Whatever it is, it's the weirdest video. It's so strange. So I think I was like half asleep yeah. when you sent it over to me. And it woke me up and like and I watched it like nine times in a row. It's, cr it's crazy. It's like it's and people are like it's a drone. It's a drone. I'm like, I, 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 farther reports of what happened after this thing. I don't think it's a drone. Plus the fact, why didn't they shoot the drone down if they don't know what it is? So no, I'm e even if it's a drone, it's one of the we it's the first time I've ever seen anything like it. You know, it's a crazy drone. I'll tell you that. The thing that it even remotely seems familiar is is the uh, pro right. droid from Empire. Right. Yeah, it does for sure. Let's see, I'm gonna zoom and see if I can. Like, it's just, and I wonder how, like, actual, how fast it's going. Yeah. Because this thing's following, and this is like a machine that's following it. And nobody, in the boat, they don't see it. They don't see it. Someone, it might have been the Mick West video where he talks about it being about a thousand feet up in the air. Right. It's also at night. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so they, they probably can't, or they even don't even know this is there. It's not even giving them a right. pause. So, I mean, look at this thing. This thing, it's like. Probably it's, has sweet stealth tech, too. And so, well, somebody also said they were like, well, what if it is a jetpack person? They're like, it's not a jetpack person. Jetpack, they're not going to go that far. And also, at night. Are we there with jetpack tech already? That would be big news. Well, so jetpack news, there there are, but the, 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 we are there, but the thing that we weren't there in 2018. Right. That's the next channel. Jetpack news Thursday. That's, that's it. That's it. Okay, so it's a crazy video. I. I the funny thing is that video dropped because Riley, myself, and Pavel talked about what we thought was going to come out of that TMZ doc. And there's a lot of stuff that has been covered in the past on that TMZ doc, but there's a lot of new stuff. And this was one of those things. And this was yeah. the big thing that everyone was talking about. And that came out literally like two hours after we stopped filming on that Monday. Yep. And it was everywhere. And it was starting to get covered everywhere. So, Riley, let me start with this before you get into your thoughts on the video itself but you actually out of the three of us you've actually watched the majority of that tmz doc what, yep. what are your thoughts on it uh I, I really am enjoying it um you know the first two episodes especially were a lot about the senate hearings and you know the people like ryan graves was was mm -hmm. featured on it and you know, they, they kind of recapped all the, you know, the videos that we watched that really got us to perk up, you know, yeah. the uh, the Tic Tac, the the uh, the gimbal and mm -hmm. the go fast. You know, those are the three videos in there. It's just great and insightful stuff as usual. It's it's a documentary that you can watch um, as on, on the outside. You're not aware of this stuff. This will really fill you in with a lot of the big names that are out there, you know, Grush, especially. Uh, Graves really comes off as, as as fantastic in this because, you know, it was like we said, um, you know, they cover the uh, the Mexican aliens, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. and um, and how that took away from the work that Graves was trying to do. Do they discredit it? Kind they of they discredit it completely. Really? Okay. Yeah, and that's that that's why I really enjoyed it a lot of it because. What I'll say, you know, we, we kind of touched on it with the, the Miami aliens, yeah. you know, it takes away from what they're trying to do. And there was behind the scenes footage of Graves being like, do not put me in front of those aliens when you talk to me. Yeah. Do not put mm -hmm. me in front of oh, that box. That oh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. They want to talk to him about, you know, what he's there to do because he he goes on record on this dock and, and Corbell as well uh, is saying this is, you know, this is bullshit. Yeah. The, the, the Mexican aliens because they the, he gets there. And you see his face sitting in the, the hearings. Yeah. You know, when these when they bring out the box, the boxes. Oh, they show they show Graves. Face. Graves is just like, yeah. Oh God. And yeah. you know, and there's scientists that came on that goes, yeah, they 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 dug up old, 
you know, Peruvian children and, um, and uh, alter their bodies is what they're saying. And that was news to me. Okay. And so then you see the, the, the person that is purported to have these Jamie aliens. Um, yeah. I, I can't remember the name, yeah. but he's saying, you know, yeah, if, you know, and he's talking to Graves. He's like, you want to bring this to, to somebody, you know, this is yeah. big, right? And Graves just, just being nice. And he's just like, yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. he's not not into it. And so that was really, really interesting to me to see, okay. you know, and then to to have Graves reiterate, you know, I'm representing a number of pilots. Well, yeah, he's been made it he's made it very clear that what he's and recently this happened too, is that um they now and I think you guys sent this to me or whatever, the commercial pilots for a long time weren't even able to had nowhere to report. Right. And now they're trying to pass or they're getting close to passing or they have passed. Peter, do you know anything about this as far as like the commercial pilots can actually report on this stuff now? Well, th that that I heard a, a while back yeah. that there was supposedly like official channels and and, right. th and that's part of what Ryan Graves was setting up, like right. a, a safe way to report that you wouldn't be like, uh, I don't Ostracized. know. Ostracized. Uh, yeah, yeah, marginalized yeah. or whatever. So, uh, yeah. right. So, go ahead. You were saying that. So, the rest no, that's of the a big, that was yeah, that was a big part of that is uh, you know his wanting to to mm -hmm. open up communication for pilots and it it's it's very it kind of hits home to me because you know my cousin Dusty is uh, is a pilot yeah and you know and, and does this and he's he's probably outranking Graves right now he's so up there mm -hmm. in the military. Um, and you know, I just next time I want to see him when I see him at a family reunion, I'll be like, "What'd you say? What What have you seen? Yeah, for real. I, I absolutely want to, but um, you know, that kind of stuff. It's like I just know the the amount of work that they do to to get to that level of not only you know security, um, you know, uh, talent, right. you know, know how to do these things. You know, they're up there, you know, putting their life in danger every single time. That's what really sticks with me when you see the tic tac the gimbal the go fast videos is that mm -hmm. these are all pilots that are seeing this stuff and are afraid to come forward right um to, now we have video and that's that's the evidence that has turned me around completely you know from from that day and and now that i look at these things and go that's the stuff we want to know right. that's what i want to know so you know We'll get into the jellyfish yeah, well, stuff. Well, let's get into it nice. So you, so you get into this. I mean, so would they debut it on the first episode? Yeah. And they yeah, talk yeah. about it for a bit. And they said, so basically, Corbell came across this through a military guy that did not give him the full video because mm -hmm. the full video, or, or we don't think he gave him the full video because they don't show the full video. The full video from what they say in this mm -hmm. video is that this thing that we just showed you guys goes for a bit and then goes over like a lake or something too, shoots into the water itself, and then... Rockets out. Rockets out yeah. at like a crazy speed. Mm -hmm. Now they say they had this on the video, but they didn't have the, but this is not the video that they had. Yeah. So people who have been trying to debunk it and everything have debunked the, this the one that we just showed you saying that it's, what are they saying? It's, it's balloons. Uh, bal I, I think that's the, the, I'm, I'm so tired of balloons. I'm yeah. so tired of balloons being everything. Balloon, balloons? Yeah. Why aren't they popping the balloons? Yeah. Well, I, I'm, I'm a little. I'm. I'm. I might be the the, the most spec, uh, skeptical on this one. To be honest with you, I've I've reversed. You know, when I first saw it, I did the probe droid analysis where mm -hmm. I went, "Hey, Empire Strikes Back." Um, I did watch some videos that kind of broke it down a lot. It does seem to be that way. Balloons? Yeah. Oh come on. Yeah. yeah. The but way you, the way you that you thought it was balloons. You thought it was balloons. The other one, the 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 one with the the with airliner. Biden. Not yeah. air, but it wasn't Air Force One. It was the. Uh, it was. It, it turned out to be refueling tanks, whatever it was. Too, it wasn't Air Force One. Oh no! Yeah, that Everyone was those, that was definitely those, refueling. Yeah, right, those right, planes. Right. Those. But you thought you thought it the was the force perspective of it when you go right by it when it's that high versus another plane that's like way out there. I'm just tired of balloons. I know. I'm, I'm I know. I am too. Because when you compare, but when you compare that, uh, the go fast, the gimbal, the tic tac versus that. They move differently. Now, you show me the video of that thing launching out of the, the water. And you change your tune. Uh, absolutely. Right, I'm, just, I'm just being the devil's advocate here after it's sitting with me, watching the videos, watching both sides of people talk. I'm a little less into it going, that is something that is out of this world. Right. But and more because the video, as we've, uh, I've learned, is, was shot at night, mm -hmm. thousands of feet in the, in the sky. Um, an analysis showing that when it changes, you know, kind of temperature, um, is consistent with the, the land mm -hmm. that actually makes it change color in the, the lens of the camera, that that is the, 
land and the whatever it is against it, changing with it. The wind, they they, they focus on a, a particular point where a flag is flying at the same. And now I can't get it out of my head that that thing is moving like a bunch of balloons. And I'm sorry. Why, I why, just. But why, but why do they have balloons in the middle of Iraq in 2018? Somebody pulled a, an actual uh, picture of some balloons that it could be in it like a. Uh, like a the bunch aid. of party balloons put together. But why yeah. is there a, why is there a bunch of party balloons in flying over Iraq on a military base? Correct. I, I am not saying that this thing is party balloons either. But I'm also not saying that it's a you know UAP. I, well, I don't until either. I'm just saying we, I, until I I would love to see yeah the footage of this thing launching off and moving the way that those go fast tic tacs and gimbals move because well, right now it's hovering. And I'm looking at this thing like it's it's something I don't know. But then here's what I'll say. Then there's other videos out there that are purporting this thing as the jellyfish, right? And then yeah. Peter, you send that that article, right? Yeah. And, and I and, yeah. and, and right. listen, I want to believe that that thing is something because I'm the one that's going to believe it. But until I see it, until I can get. Hey, Other I think it's sourcing. fair, Riley. I think you're fair to be in that space. You know, yeah. I, I have to tell you one thing for me with this video is when I zoom in on it, mm -hmm. it's brain breaking to me. Yeah. When I'm Absolutely. watching I was it, zooming like, on it too. Phone, yeah. Yeah. When I watch on my phone or whatever it is, like I, I could I could be swayed either way. But when I zoom in on it, there's like there is sh shading on that structure that makes it feel like it has a definitive de a definitive shape. I don't know, but that's what it feels like when I'm looking at it. Um, and, you know, I've, I also saw this, that Mick West video where he breaks it down. And, and yeah, don't get me wrong, that, that, that does make me pump the brakes a little bit. However, there are there is that article that I sent that, you know, look, the, man, the article the puts it into, ever. you know, that muddy, you know, that muddy range for me where I go, all right, you know, because yeah. if, if, you know, we have, when was that article dated? Here it is. Uh, 54. Uh, yeah, here, 54. Here, so here it is. Yeah. You're telling me flying jellyfish tailed a plane, and that's from 1954, and then we have this video? I, like I said, I'm going, there is something there. Yeah. But right I, I, now, I, at looking at this video, yeah, I have to, face. and hearing that debunking video, or, or and they haven't debunked shit. Let's get, let's call it what it yeah. is. No, because, it's just yeah. they're trying to debunk it, which hey, I know that's what people are trying to do. It's just giving you a little like uh, I have pumped the uh, argument one way or the other. You know, devil's advocate. Right. And it's fair right. because I'm gonna look, I'm gonna exist in that space where you're gonna have to show me more before I, I so. go. That's something that that's a flying jellyfish monster, and yeah. we gotta we gotta arm up. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I'm looking yeah, at it going. I, okay, all right, all right, but I, I, I need more. I, yeah, look, my gut tells me that it's. Just as likely that it's a drone that we're not familiar, a type of that drone could be too, yeah. that we don't know about, right? And that's possible. Like, it might be that they're testing something that's, you know, uh, flying it over the base to see if any of their uh, soldiers can detect it. You know, whatever. It could be our tech. It could be, you know, experimental tech. Whatever that is, though, it does, to me, it, it doesn't, I don't get the impression that it's balloons looking at it. I've seen the video you're talking about it. Mm -hmm. I could see how someone would say that. I just feel like it is it has a structural quality to it but at the same time I don't want to like you know hang my hat on that and and no I don't think anybody wants to or should be like oh, 100% it's just that we are in this situation now this environment where we're picking and choosing who we think is credible yep and we're that's that's coloring a lot of our our you know judgment at the moment and that's tough because you know people are fallible and, you know, here's the other thing, like, it could be that Jeremy Corbell's telling the truth, got this from a reliable source, and that that source was fed something, you know, to 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 embarrass Jeremy Corbell. Well, but, but wait, but you know, yeah, the, the reason, why, but Peter, you bring that up, and you and I talked about this, too, and I think that this is the one, um, there was, they, they, they talked about this jellyfish one, I want to play this one, this clip, yeah. they had Ross Colhart from the News Nation clip itself, because... Let, let's watch this interview and then we'll continue talking about this. Here it is. Yeah. About the latest UFO revelations is investigative journalist and News Nation special correspondent Ross Coldhart. Ross, it is good to see you again. Thanks for being here. Good evening, Natasha. 
Let's start with the jellyfish UFO video released by Jeremy Corbell. Corbell. This is over a U.S. base in Iraq. What do you make of this video uh, surprising so many people this week? Look, the, the problem, there's one issue I have with that video, and it's an issue with a lot of imagery that we see of UAPs. Um, I don't doubt that it's come from sources who've told Jeremy and George Knapp that it is a UAP. The issue with the video is that we're told that it descended into water and then it came out of the water after 17 minutes and was seen to hit off at speed at 45 degrees, which suggests some kind of intelligent control. The, the problem is... The best part of the uh, description of the account is not on video. So it doesn't bear out on video what we're being told happened in that incident in Iraq. And whilst I'm not saying it's not a UAP, I'm not the person that's been talking to the sources that have told George and Jeremy this, I, I do wonder, though, whether it's possible to get more of the video to be able to validate it further. Yeah, I really uh, appreciate you bringing this up because Jeremy, as you say, has claimed that the extended version of this video shows the UFO diving underwater, re-emerging 17 minutes later at this high rate of speed, this angle you mentioned. To your knowledge, does any man-made tech have that sort of transmedium capability? There are some drones that are in development that are capable of going underwater and then coming out into the air. But I think what we're seeing here is an object that's not consistent with normal drone technology. It's something completely off the wall, frankly, in terms of what we would think of as something that's capable of doing that kind of movement. But unfortunately, we haven't seen that mm. entry and exit into and out of the water. So it's very, very hard to make a conclusion. Ross, why wouldn't he release that extended part of the video? Look, I, I, I can't speak for Jeremy, but maybe he doesn't have it. I mean, sources are often very difficult people, sometimes for very good reasons. They don't leak a full video. I've been in that experience myself. It's a very frustrating game working as a journalist, dealing with sources on this UAP issue. There might be identifying marks on the video at that point, which would allow the source to be identified. I don't know. I mean, from what I understand, though, I, I understand Jeremy said that the object was under observation and seen to enter the water and then to exit the water after 17 minutes. So maybe the simple explanation is, he didn't get a copy of the video showing the entry and the exit to and from the water, but his sources have told him that that was the case. It's frustrating, but frankly, we journalists are only ever as good as the sources that feed us. Agreed and understood. Um, Ross, this was a topic uh, coming up that really piqued my interest tonight. You were approached with new video we hadn't seen from Sydney, Australia of a similar looking UFO. Um, you have not been able to verify if this object is unidentified in nature. What are we seeing here? When was this taken? And how does it compare to the other jellyfish video from Iraq? I was approached by somebody from Sydney uh, who I haven't been able to contact back to actually ask to be able to name them, but they're happy for me to uh, use and describe the video. And essentially it does look like a jellyfish. And in the uh, actual audio of the video, the guy while he's filming it describes how it looks like a jellyfish. The problem I have, and journalistically, I can't reach any conclusion on this video. We just don't know enough about it. It could be a bunch of party balloons that have been stuck together and put up in the sky. But the gentleman that I engaged with online who told me that he'd recorded this video just in the last few weeks, he said it didn't look like balloons. But the simple fact is, I personally think we can't reach conclusions about this kind of imagery. We, we have to look for default to prosaic possible explanations, mundane explanations. And I think, frankly, the most likely explanation is that it's a bunch of party balloons. Let's conclude that and held until we hear evidence otherwise. But I'm told there are anomalous objects seen like this jellyfish shape all over the world. I've been in touch also with somebody from Eastern Europe who's told me that they've been seen over there. The, the, the simple fact is we need sharper cameras and we need better quality um, vision overall to make sure that we can actually make any conclusions about this kind of imagery.
So look, uh, a lot of people are using the balloon stuff. I think I just want to pop every freaking balloon that's been. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's, it, it just drives me nuts with the balloon thing. But like, yeah. I just the thing that throws me off about the balloon stuff. Do I think that balloons have been mistaken for UFOs and UAPs? Yes, I do. Do I think this is the case for this one? I don't because I just don't think that when it comes. And I don't not. And again, I'm not saying that it's necessarily. I, I would play. I would put more stock in a drone than I would balloons uh, yeah. on this one because it also is weird. The article in 1954 has this thing. There's other ones. There's other spottings of this particular type of model, whatever it might be, that it very well could be a, a drone technology from another country. If so, so that's from, me, from the 50s. So that's I know. Yeah, I know but, that's what, but, but if it's the 50s and it's still the same, the same balloons have been floating around for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this amount of years, like, come it's, on. Yeah, no, it, it's it's something you know, and that that interview you just played. I mean, that's just kind of where I land. Yeah, you know, that's that's kind of until there is you know that footage can be released fully. I get that. Um, you know, that the most mundane stuff like balloons is usually where we kind of lean. I mean, that we we've talked many times on this show about you know. 99.9% of the time, right? It's this or it's this or it's this or it's this. We're talking about that 1% or that 2%, whatever it may be. So when that thing is moving the way it's moving, you know, I want that video that, that Corbell has, or maybe he doesn't have, um, of it moving. Yeah. You know, because if that thing flies out of the ocean. It's going to convince you a little bit more. Oh, hell yeah, right. it will. Because right. I have seen the Tic Tac, I have seen the Gimbal, and I have seen the Go Fast. Yeah. And then those are consistent in a lot of the pilot's descriptions. Thing, yeah. Right? And they're like, consistent with a lot of the pilot's descriptions, a lot of the, the actual declassified things that you can now see online, you know, that we've watched many times on the show, or, sure. we, you know, you and I going on there going, what the hell is that? They're moving. Right, they're moving. They're defying gravity. They're doing things that I don't even, not even a freaking physicist can uh, explain. That's moving in in ways that you know. If you say balloons, you start to see balloons. Right. So yeah. I, you know, I want to. Like I said, I have the poster up in my mind. I want to believe that this is a <laughs> flying jellyfish monster. You know, harbinger of doom that is coming to 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 tell us that you you know you got to stop putting nuclear bombs in people's hands yeah. or whatever it may be. But then you see that article of the pilot. Balloons aren't going to follow around a plane. Right. And yeah. I get that. So when you have the jellyfish description from a 50s pilot saying it's been f following us around, that makes me go, okay, right. all right, I, I, I want to believe this thing. But for now, you know, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm pumping the brakes, as Peter said. Hey, the, the pressure's on the journalist, man, and mm -hmm. to, to get this out, figure out a way to make this more believable, more compelling. You know, I, I imagine that, you know, when they put out that video that, there was an expectation that everybody was just going to be like, holy crap, this is it. Right. And the fact that people have gotten to a point where they're more uh, scrutinizing at, at the at minimum, I think that's good. I think it's yes. good that like yeah. we get to a point where we're like that, like here's where I'm at. I go, that video looks wild to me. It, I, to I told you uh, when we were watching it, I watched it like nine times on loop when you sent it to me. It was like the middle of the night or something where I'm at. And so it definitely, you know, challenged my brain. But having said that, I, I do want to see the part where it goes into the water and comes out, especially if I'm being told that that video exists somewhere. Mm -hmm. Hey, the pressure's on them to deliver it. And I think we'll all be better for it. Yeah, it's true. And don't we yeah. have to do that? In, yeah. in this space right now, yeah. we we have to scrutinize this stuff. We, we have to be I, a little bit we, yeah. we, and, right. And, I'm not gonna. I I don't want to believe everything as it comes. I want to believe the stuff that is like that people can't poke a hole in it. Right. You know, because well, we're only going to make we're going to make leaps and bounds when you get people in the scientific community to come and support these claims right. so that we can start to pull back that veil and get the transparency that we're looking for. Yeah, that's the other point. Is that I think that Peter, you say both of you guys say the same the same thing, which I agree with, is that we're at a place right now that this video itself, like if you would have seen this thing in 2018, 2017, yeah. you'd be like, whoa, what's that? That's crazy. Oh, yeah. But yeah. now it's like, look, we have so many of these types of videos, even though this one is a little bit more and there's more stuff to it. And it turns out that they do have that water side of it. Uh, it's gonna be something that I think is gonna really move the needle, but it's always the grainy footage, the what is that exactly? There's the never that real clear shot yet of the and from what people say, those that footage exists and that stuff 
is behind you know this uh, this wall that we can't see. Absolutely, like, that's when, what we need. When's that stuff going to start leaking out? Right, this right. Leaked, like this leaked video is something that is was not supposed to get out there. Obviously, and you're going to try to say, well, yeah, yeah, it's nothing, it's nothing until you have it. it he needed the end piece of it. It's yep. like it. It's a great conversation thing, and I'm and I'm definitely. I, no, all respect to you. I think balloons is 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 no. I think it's silly. <laughs> I think balloons is silly. But I do think if someone says it's a drone, and they don't have the water part of it, and it's shooting out of the water, hard hard to argue because I don't know. Like you said, Peter, yeah. I don't know what kind of drone technology there is. So and yeah, dude. The other thing is like I don't know what to, how to trust my eyes anymore. Like right. I, I there's a video I I sent you guys in the chat a few days ago, and I just put it back in the chat. But it's another jellyfish video, and to me, it's an even more impressive video. But like, I show it to Gabby, my wife, and she's like, "That looks like bad CG." I'm like, "Dude, I don't feel like it looks like bad CG, but it but it could be really good, you know, fake f footage." And and it's it's a it shows a jellyfish type you know, entity or drone or whatever it is. And it shows it hovering. And then, you know, it starts to, the, the whoever made this clip, you know, stabilizes the footage then adjusts the contrast then slows it down by 50% because at the end of the video, it shoots off so fast. It looks like it blips out of existence. Okay. But when you put it at 50%, it starts to like compress and then it, it has a little trail that it leaves. But before it takes off these three orbs emanating around it, like uh, join it and then it takes off it's wild dude and and i'm looking at it and i'm like i don't know if what i'm looking at anymore which yeah. is a crazy place to be we're actually playing it as you're talking oh, okay. that's great yeah. it's okay. wild dude yeah it's like it is it is you gotta wait till the end of it because the end of it to me is what's really compelling yeah because it's like you, oh it looks like it's moving and then it just kind of zips and it's kind it of almost looked like it was lifting up the bottom of the tentacles into yeah. into the 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 spear that that this is I'm, I'm sorry but it's a little this one gets me a little bit more than the one that corbell look at that yeah but and, is this one fake you know like my wife looks at it and laughs at me i'm like bro really yeah but, see, but, that's, <laughs> but that's the whole point you want to get you want to get down and dirty i went i went back and forth with pavel today on this thing <laughs> and and you know we're talking and he's and I, I, you know, listen, we were talking about the string theory, like last yeah. week, you know, and, you know, the dreaming yeah. and like, you know, out of bodies experiences and being connected to a silver, like a silver string that can, you know, keeps your like, quote unquote, soul there yeah. attached to your body, you know. He's talking about some, you know, some people. Oh, yeah, I see it at the end there. It's yeah. The it zipped off. Dude, that's wild. But you can see these things that sometimes we are in a, we're, we're in a, we're in a whole new world now, right? Yeah. And, uh, but the idea that, you know, we are conditioned as humans to look at certain things like this and that certain people might, and this is Pavel and, and Pavel can chime in maybe in the chat or something or talk to us a, at another time. But what I gather from it is like a new kind of evolution happening with certain people yeah. and it might be by design. This is big, big picture stuff. Um, but that, you know, a new form of evolution where some of us maybe can see it. Some of us might might not yeah. be able to really mm -hmm. process it because of X, Y, and Z, but that, you know, th this could be the, the next stage that, and if you want to go into some of these theories, you know, that aliens put us here or whatnot, yeah. maybe that's part of it, you know, but, you know, there are people that will look at this video and go, nah, balloons, right? you know, or nah, it's drone or whatever that's it may where be. I think that that ontological shock is going to come from, you know, like I feel exactly. like if I found out tomorrow that all these videos are real, just that, just that, like I would be like, yeah, okay. I that's what I figured. You know, I, I had a feeling, right? right? But if you tell some of my friends or my wife, all these videos are real, she's going to go, fuck, you know, like she has right. to have a little bit more of a hurdle there. And if you tell me like, oh, we were created in an ant farm for aliens right. to look at or whatever, I'm going right. to be like, huh, <laughs> uh, okay. I, 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 okay. I, 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 like that's I, not exact. I, I wasn't I don't positive know. that that was the outcome, but okay, I'm, I'm I can see it. But I don't you know tell, if you're going to react that way. <laughs> no, but, <laughs> yeah. no, but what I'm saying is, you know, if you tell my I'm, friends, I might go into family, shock. I, yeah, I know. I know exactly what you're saying, and I think you're yeah. right. Like you, the people that I was talking about in the beginning of the show that were like, if like tomorrow, like th they're not paying attention to any of this. They just know. Oh, my friends, the loony who talks about this on Tuesdays, <laughs> right? And if they tomorrow found out. That oh by the way you know you're talking to your friendless everything that he's talking about on Tuesday you should probably watch his show because a lot of the stuff he covers turned out to be actual 
facts now. And the, and right. when it comes to the stuff like at the hearings, like hopefully the major news uh, media is uh, media actually picks up the second hearing because they covered some of the first one. Maybe they'll cover the second one. We'll see. We'll see if the if the fat cats are still paying them to not do it. But that's, yeah. I'm I'm convinced that's what it is now. By the way, the fact there's that, a yeah. there's a a clip of uh, or, or an interview that George Knapp, a conversation with George Knapp and Jeremy, whatever the, and George Knapp was basically saying, and you can see Jeremy's face, like, you know, drops in disappointment. He's like, you know, I used to say, I want disclosure now. I want us to know what's going on. And and the more I learn about this, the more I think, I don't know if I want disclosure anymore. I don't think, you know, I want to live in the world where people are read into this stuff. And, uh, and, you know, going back to what we're saying, like, there are days where I have a mental exercise. <laughs> I don't know if you guys ever do this, but like, like where I say, okay, we are in an ant farm or we yeah, are right. some kind of like right. experiment. And in I the just matrix. really mer- meditate on that yeah, for a yeah. minute. And it's heavy, dude. For sure. oh, <laughs> it's, dude it's, it's the whole premise of the movie, the matrix. Oh, so, I, yeah. yeah. I yeah. go in th- existential crisis almost every single night talk, thinking <laughs> about this <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Because I mean, I you can start Christian with you can dude. start with UAP stuff, but then you can you can I mean, sometimes I just I just think about this speck of dust that we're living on, right. floating in a, a million specks of dust, and I mean that makes me go, uh, uh. yeah. That's but that also you, reinforces all this stuff for me. Yeah. It makes would, me go. There's got to be more. Than I would that. just, of course, there is, and I would love. I I mean, I would, and I don't know how I would react to it, but I would love the answer. Whatever yeah. the answer is, I would love the answer. I mean, because to me, it's like, you know, everyone else, you just kind of, everybody's just living the same life, right? Yeah. Yes, I, I want me too. I would love to be in the cycle part of it when we found out what it is. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like you, it's, not that I'm going to mean a damn thing in the in grand scheme of it, but it's yeah. like, yeah, but I was there. It's like, it's like the same guys. <laughs> I was like, I saw Ali fight. Well, yeah. guess what? This I channel was here. will pop off. Yeah, <laughs> right. right. But I, I was here when the aliens came in, or I was here when yeah. the interdimensional beings finally showed up and said, "Hey, yeah. here we are." Yeah. Um. So I don't know. There's a lot to it, but um. I, there's a couple. There's one more thing because we got to because Riley's got to go in a second. But I but I have yeah. um, I do have a few more things that I want to talk about. There's a couple more stories that popped up. Um, but before I do, now we're in a goofy mood, we're in a silly mood, we're in a fun mood. Are we in a sexy mood? Because I'm going to tell you right now, both <laughs> about Blue Chew and Manscaped, they fit perfectly together. <laughs> so here you go. <laughs> Cheers to the new year from our friends over at Manscaped, because your resolutions shouldn't be the only things that are well kept. 2024 is the time for new heights, new opportunities, and a new look for your Times Square balls. Manscaped Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. It's every man's cheat to look good, feel good, and turn the page on confidence this year. Whether you're looking to maintain a trim or go for the clean shaven look, the trimmer has you covered. It's trusted by over 10 million men worldwide. Now is your time to get a grip on your grooming with our exclusive offer. You got to go to manscaped.com. Use that code big thing. You get 20% off and free shipping. Happy New Year or happy new balls, whatever you want to do. I love Manscaped, been using them forever. I can't even imagine a world when I didn't have Manscaped. It's the best. It's like having a personal stylist at your fingertips or wherever you need it, actually. But And if we didn't mention it's waterproof because a trim in the shower is the only way to start the day. It's the best. I love the grooming kit. In the grooming kit, you get the trusted lawnmower, you get the Manscaped ear and nose hair trimmer, and the essential aftercare products with the Crop Soother Ball After Shave Lotion and the Crop Preserver Anti Shaving Ball Deodorant. Yes, it's deodorant for your balls. You didn't think you needed it, but you do. Let's face it, resolutions might come and go. Well groomed you, that's here to stay, baby. Thanks to Manscaped. One more time, get 20% off and free shipping. Got to use that code big thing at manscaped.com because nothing says happy new year like a deal that leaves your balls and your budget feeling refreshed. Embrace a new you and definitely embrace a new trimmer. That's courtesy of Manscaped. This episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Come on, let's do it. Let's talk about sex. Hey guys, remember the days when you were always ready to go? Everybody, you're like, yeah, back in the day go whenever i wanted to well now you can increase your performance you can get that extra confidence in bed listen up bluechew.com blue chew's no joke it's pretty great it's unique online service and it delivers the same active ingredients as viagra cialis and levitra but in chewable tablets at a fraction of the cost you can take them whenever daytime night you can plan ahead be ready whenever that opportunity arises and the process is super simple you sign up at bluechew.com 
Consult with one of the licensed medical providers, and once you are approved, then you receive your prescription within days. And the best part? All online. No visit to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. So, for me, yes, it works. And the thing is, you know, I didn't think I needed it, but hey, you try it for a month and you see, you love it. You can be missing out on the best sex of your life. I'm telling you, they always say first impressions are important. What about lasting impressions? Do it. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. They do. Discover your options at bluechew.com. Chew it and do it. Love that. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. You got to try Blue Chew free, but you got to use that promo code Big Thing at checkout. Just pay five dollars shipping. That's bluechew.com. Promo code Big Thing to receive your first month free. Yeah, do you hear that? Free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we got to thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. Again. All right, thank you to our friends over at Blue Chew and Manscaped. I'm telling you, if, if, if this stuff gets you going, I just gave you the tools. Uh, go into the links in the description. It helps out the show tremendously. We love our sponsors, and we're, and we're sure that you will too. So go ahead, check it out. Um, okay, so let's talk about Real quick, the uh, like so the other thing too, and I know that we all stand in the same thing, but I'll tell you, there were a lot of people in those comments last week because we had a really, our episode. That was the the not only the biggest episode of UAP Tuesday that we've ever done; it's the yeah. biggest big thing that we've ever done. It surpassed Katie Sackoff's episode. Wow! Um, and there were a lot of comments, and yeah. it was not universal that everybody's on board with our take on the Miami mall incident. Uh, yeah, I, I get it. There's a lot of people who think that there's a lot of cover up going on a lot. Think that, that, you know, the, uh, there's more footage out there than we actually saw that we didn't dive deep into it. And I will say this, I didn't dive deep enough into it to know all of the, uh, all of the facts. I didn't, I yeah. talked to a friend of mine who I mentioned who is going to come on the show soon once he gets the clearance to, to do so. Um, and he dove deeper into it. Giamatti was the first thing he brought up to it. Like he, he doesn't seem convinced that it was what they say it was. Um, again, I don't want to speak for him, but I'm just saying the way that I read it when I was talking to <laughs> when I was talking to him. But um, I, uh, I still am. I'm, I've kind of hold my stance in last week yeah. that I, I don't. I just feel like there might have been more footage from cameras. Mm -hmm. on the ground. I understand that when we're talking about shooting things up in the sky, mm -hmm. I think somebody would have leaked it. I think if there were all those cops that some of them would have, somebody would have leaked something. I could be wrong. I could I'll, be wrong. The day I'll, is still I'll, young. Good, Peter. If, if only you knew someone from Miami, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> so, so, yes, spoiler, I live in Miami and it was the number one thing I was being DM'd all like yeah, week, sure. like, yo, what's going on in Miami? The first thing I did was I messaged a, a good, good buddy of mine who's a high ranking member of the Miami Police Department. And I said, I just literally text him. I go, aliens, question mark. <laughs> and he goes, no aliens, bro. <laughs> yeah. And I said, so what's why 500 cars, you know, outside yeah. the mall. And the truth is in Miami, that's not a one off occurrence. I've seen that in my lifetime a few times for things that don't necessarily pan out to anything. But, um, you know, he reminded me like it's New Year's Day. There's nothing else going on. And someone called in. An, an active shooter at the mall. And so this mall for anybody who doesn't know is an outdoor mall and it's got like a very echoey vibe in there. I've been to it my whole life and uh, it's like 20 minutes from my house. And so if you, it, what apparently happened is kids brought in fireworks to the mall on new year's day, started lighting them in the mall. Yeah. And, uh, and, and it freaked people out. Everybody panicked, ran out Like you saw the footage of people running. That's legit. And, and so when they showed up, it's minors, you know, like underage kids. So they don't put them on, on camera, but there's a lot of footage from that night of, of kids brawling outside the mall of, uh, I, I, and, and I've seen the footage on TikTok and all this of what people are claiming are the shadowy figures. I can tell you the stuff that I've seen that's popped off on the internet is statues that are in front of the mall that I've seen my whole life that are lit from behind. So it looks like a big shadowy entity. Yep. I've seen it my whole life, you know, and uh, there are other videos and pictures being passed around that are not this mall. They're flat out not this mall. And so I can tell you as someone who's been to that mall a hundred times, 
it's there's pictures where it's like an enclosed mall. This is not an enclosed mall. So, you know, it, I really think it's nonsense. And I, I think the fact that it, it, uh, it, it got carried by a certain, you know, like, like a bunch of young people. It's like, a, it's like a grift thing, you know, everyone's mm -hmm. trying to be the next big YouTuber off of it. And none of the people that we usually watch about, you know, to Recovering, cover this stuff, right? talked about it. Yeah. That was another tell for me. Yeah. Uh, you, 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 and I'm, you know what? I'm glad that yeah. there's going to be a lot of comments on this and saying you didn't dig deep enough. You didn't, you got to ask these questions, right? You got to go dude, in with in the Miami, fervor dude. and the, <laughs> yeah. in Miami, everybody would have flipped 500 phones open, dude. There's right. no way you're getting everybody's phone. That's kind and of what Christian rush, was saying, right? Yeah. That yeah. rush out of there, they, they would have trampled the cops. Forget out of here. I know. Dude. I don't, yeah. I don't like the answer. The last I saw it in the comments and I saw that like, I was too scared to do it. I was like, there, there are people who will, that have filmed tons of stuff that have scared course, them and great. Well, yeah, but not another another being. It's like, be, as Peter just said, we're in an age now that if you know you can film something, that you're gonna say, "Well, look what I got." You're gonna do it. I don't care, absolutely fear or not. Somebody. I'm not telling you that some people wouldn't have been scared because they definitely would have. But there's with that many people and that many people running around. I don't know. And like I said. I, I will never definitively say, especially in a big thing like this, to is it possible that there was a major cover up? Of course it's possible. Yeah. Is it possible that the entire police force was like, don't say anything about this whatsoever? Sure. I mean you look at hard. Uh, when you look at it's hard, hard, hard it's to leaking, do. dude. It, it's, it would, yeah, it would leak. leak. It would look look at look at uh, uh James Fox's doc. Yeah. The the um shoot, the one in in, in uh oh my god. Yeah. Help me um, out. No, uh, for, uh, moment oh, of contact. Thank you. Moment Damn. of contact. When you look at moment of contact, there's a lot of police that were involved in that, and it leaked, mm -hmm. <laughs> and people talked Dude. about it. Tons of people talked about it, but in, not in this particular way. This is like that one to me. The moment of contact one is uh, is very interesting. Mm -hmm. Like that yeah. one still. That one. That one with all the fact and the way the stuff that that's put together in that one. That to me is one of the most convincing ones that I've seen. If anybody hasn't seen James Fox's moment of contact i highly recommend watching that one that one to me is very very compelling yeah absolutely mm -hmm. for me as well yeah and 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 to that point the leak the the amount of cameras that are out there the amount of people that could maybe know about this and then are are, are you know in the corner saying don't tell anybody if if this is correct and there were alien beings or whatever it may be that were there the day is young as i said earlier right. it will it yeah. could and will come out for now what i am just passionate about is being sure of these things and that might be an impossible thing with it with all of this but when we get people that are you know scientifically backed or, or that have the scientific minds to break this down clear footage you know corbell and and the uh, and this um uh, the jellyfish you know show that video for the miami thing let's see some more proof right, right now it's gonna be a little difficult to say well I believe it because this dude over here said he saw aliens. Okay, if that guy believes it 100%, okay, I'm going to listen to that guy. Right. I want, yeah, absolutely, we'll listen to him. But I, I, I'm not there. I need to see these things and have proof myself to, to, to feel beyond a, a sure. reasonable doubt, I suppose. Yeah. So that, until that happens, you know, right now, I, it, it, it looks and sounds like exactly what you were saying, Peter. You know, an active shooter... In that's this what world? I said last week. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly where we're going. Mall, it's in, in a, a tourist, tourist mall during the holidays. You know, you know avoiding more... a tragedy uh, yeah. of of that epic proportions that we've seen yeah. happen in in, yeah. in 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 the United States. It happens almost every day. And what happens yeah. normally when that's over, they point fingers at the police department Correct. right away. Mm -hmm. And so it's like it's New Year's. Send every, everyone, everybody, everybody. everybody. And, so. and you know what's a, a juicier conspiracy if you want to get like yeah. wild about it is you maybe you're somebody who knows this jellyfish video is coming out and you're like oh look this thing uh, is going around the internet as a as a, a cover up Pu push that algorithm out make sure everybody's talking about shadow aliens in the Miami Mall right. like it sounds like the Enquirer you know what I mean so like if you believe that like media is manipulated and controlled and like. That's that's a really cool way to to distract from one thing to show the other. So when you Google aliens, the first couple of weeks of January, you're getting Miami aliens, not yeah. anything else. It does show that there is more conversation that goes in, even if people are you know still thinking that it's a cover up and all these things. It means that there's people who are really believing more so that there is a cover up going on in general. 
So yeah. the fact that the, the fact that it even could be even a, a an idea for people that this could possibly happen means that there's more to it overall. So that's a good thing. Yeah, that, good that thing. is because yeah. we are witnessing that with. The Senate hearings and what Burchett is saying is like, yeah. okay, if you're saying this doesn't exist, then this is bullshit. What are you spending all that money on? That's right. You know, and that is what we are trying to get to the bottom of, and that's, that's my, the transparency yeah. that we are looking to see. So uh, it, it it's not a big leap to go, okay, they're going to cover up aliens who are shopping no. at the Gap on New Year's. You know, right. okay, right. all right, let's see it. Yeah, that's that's my thing, man. Is that like I I'm with Burchett on this one too. Is that I just feel like. They're, as they always say with everything, follow the money, right? Right. And right now, like the thing that that is the most intriguing to me is the amount of cover up that's been going on since the '40s, since Roswell, since all these things. Like, and the reports from all the military that there are these separate programs, and where are they? And the idea that the Mike Turner thing was one of the biggest like mm -hmm. farts I've ever smelled, yeah. and it was yeah. like to me yeah. that's that's the big like the fact that this guy not only labeled like the most crooked politician back in like 2010, right. but Lockheed, Lockheed Martin is the one who's been you know one of his biggest backers and all that too. Like that just stinks, and you yeah. got you got to follow that stuff. That's the stuff to me yeah. that's fascinating because that's the stuff that is eventually going to go. Okay, fine. As we've said many times on this show, maybe it isn't interdimensional stuff. Maybe it isn't aliens, but what the hell is it? Exactly. That's the way you find out. Yep. Because even it turns out, yo, know, all this stuff is these high-tech drones that uh, this uh, other From country, China whatever, or whatever right? country, whatever country had since the freaking forties, they've had this, and this is how they built out certain things in their, their nation. And they did this and they've been spying us here and this, and they did this. Then it's like, whoa! We need to know yeah. about this stuff as as citizens of this of this kind of the world needs to know about this. Like whatever country it would be, if that is indeed the case, I don't feel that that's the case, but I think there's enough trail to find out what is the case, and that's what they're trying to do at the hearing. Yeah. So, I ask you guys, what do you think about all the stuff that we covered here today? We talked about the senators who heard all this stuff do you think that these hearings when do you think they're going to happen we didn't even really get into that man uh when are they going to happen who's going to be the next whistleblower to come out and talk about what do you think about that jellyfish video you think it's real do you think it's balloons um or you know and then also what do you think still what's your thoughts on that miami mall incident there's so much so i'd like to thank my uh panel here today starting with our guest attack peter peter where can they find you man what do you got going on uh, I'm everywhere online at Attack Peter. I'm an artist and a creative director over at Mondo. So you can always find my new work, toys that I design or art that I'm overseeing over there. So check me out there. And so many people have reached out to say what's up online from this show. So nice meeting you guys and continue to do so. I love that. All right, Riley. Nice. Uh, at Riley around on the internet, uh, at R-E-I-L-L-Y around. See you there. As I mentioned to you guys before, if you're watching this show, your first time, you stumbled upon it, you wanted to talk uh, about this phenomenon and find out exactly what's going on, hit that button, man. Subscribe to the channel. Help us get to 200,000 faster than we got to 100. If you stumbled upon it, hit the button. There are a lot of people who've watched the video but didn't hit the button. If you do that, you can be part of the conversation each and every week. We want to be part of it. We want to keep spreading the word, so please do that. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, as I mentioned, getting one of our sponsors helps out the show. It supports the show. People said, hey, how can I support the show? Support yourself. Get one of our wonderful sponsors today and get that to help us to help you. Uh, that's it, man. I want to thank my guests once again. We'll see you guys next Tuesday. And I'm still working on that series, man. Me, Pavel, and my buddy Aaron, we're going to be working on the series where we're going to uh, basically profile all the people in the community. And we're probably going to start with David Grush. So there you go. That's the show. We'll see you on the flip side. It's the big thing. Peace.